campground water is nasty. inline water filters that you get from camping stores go from downright bad to okay for weekend trips. But if you're like me and you like really good quality water when you're camping or like us living in our RV, I'm going to show you a really easy and relatively cheap way to build a solid water filter. And an added bonus, it's going to be a fraction of the cost of the multi-stage water filters out there that you see that are marketed to campers. But I don't want you guys to just believe me that it's better. We are going to do science. And we're gonna test my hypothesis that my filter is better than the ones that you can buy at the store. We're gonna perform two different tests. Test number one, water quality. Obviously the most important one. Test two, flow rate. If your water filter inhibits the flow of water, what's the point of even using it? All right, let's get into the build. All right, so all you're gonna need for this build are your filter housings, your filters, and fittings. And then the fittings that I bought are so that I can splice this filter in line with my PEX tubing. Now, just so you guys know, you can also build this where you can use it like a traditional inline filter and just screw a hose into the side. Like I said, you can mount this any way you like. Just get different fittings. That's all it takes. And I'm gonna add some links in the video description so you guys can purchase this stuff on Amazon too if you'd like to. I shopped around and got the cheapest stuff I could find at the time of me purchasing it. And honestly guys, this is literally a third of the cost of what it would cost me to buy a professional version. And I guarantee you it's gonna work just as good if not better. But before I get into the build, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the pieces that I got. So the first thing on the list, filter housing. So this is sort of just a standard 10 inch filter housing. You can buy 10 inch filters online on Amazon. You can buy them at Home Depot, Walmart. That's why I decided to go with this. Uh, it's not a proprietary filter size, so it's gonna be available. Uh, this one's got one of the little purge valves. So I bought three of these. So next, we've got our sediment filters. This is gonna be your first filter in line. So everything's going to kinda of come in contact with these, and these are probably gonna wear out faster than your other filters. These are 20 micron filters. So just to kinda of put that in perspective, a lot of your cheap inline filter housings are 20 micron filters, and this is our first line of defense. And they came in a pack of four, and it was really cheap. Next, we've got our five micron filter. So this is our first carbon filter. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna filter particles down to five microns, but that carbon filter is also gonna help improve the taste some. And then last, we've got our one micron filter. So this is going to filter down to that tiny little, I don't even know how tiny one micron is to be honest. I just know it's very, very small. This is a solid block of carbon. So it's gonna also make the water taste a little bit better as well. Next, we've got our little connection fittings. So these are three quarter inch NPT to three quarter inch NPT, both male. That way you can screw your filter housings together. Last, we've got our three quarter inch NPT to our half inch PEX fittings. So this is where I'm gonna directly splice into my RV's plumbing system. And then that way my filter is permanently mounted. Step one. You're gonna need two filter housings and your male to male pipe fitting. Make sure on your first filter housing you locate where in and out are and you're going to screw in your pipe fitting on the outside. You're then going to take your next filter housing and screw in the inside to the outside. Tighten it down nice and tight. Now you're gonna rinse and repeat with the last filter housing. So screw your pipe thread into the out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw in our three quarter inch NPT to half inch PEX on the outsides 
of the filter. Use a wrench to tighten. Now we're going to locate the inside of our filter and we're going to do our 20 micron filter, followed by our five, followed by our one. Filter one. Tighten down just hand tight for now. Filter two. And it helps to hold these vertically whenever you're screwing the filter in. That way you're not pressing the filter up against the inside ring and potentially damaging it. Filter three. All right, last step is to take your included filter wrench that comes with each one of these housings and tighten it down. Don't want it to be too tight because you're gonna have to get this off at some point. And now your filter housing is built. So one of the cool things about these filter housings is they actually come with little mounts and some screws that you can put on the top, right in those four holes there on the top of each filter housing. And you can mount this somewhere in the RV. Uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do, uh, but we'll see once I actually get into it. So one of the things I absolutely love about going the DIY route with this water filter, all these extra water filters. I mean, this this here is probably $200 worth of water filters if I were to purchase one of the professionally made kits. So because I'm using standard 10 inch filters that you can buy at Home Depot, Walmart, Amazon, wherever, they're cheap and they come in multi-packs. So my 20 micron filter came in a pack of four, my five micron filter came in a pack of three, my one micron filter came in a pack of three as well. And those individual packs were cheaper than if I were to buy one filter from one of these, these companies that are proprietary. So using these 10 inch filters really has its benefit. So now that you guys have seen me build it, let's go ahead and skip to another day where I can actually test all of these filters. Because I don't have my test kit in yet and I got way too excited and wanted to do this video prematurely. But that's okay, we're still gonna get to the science. So we're running into a really weird problem that I never thought we would have. Our campground water is entirely too clean to actually get this test and get any sort of results. So I've got an idea of something we can do to make sure that we get decent test results and can actually see a difference between these filters. That's okay. Let's do this test. So in order to do this test, and in order to have it be as accurate as possible, we needed to find water that was really bad. The crazy thing is we went to four different campgrounds in completely different areas of the state, and I couldn't find bad water. And I know to most people that sounds like a really good thing, but to me, it got me thinking about how good we really have it. 
And I know not all campgrounds throughout the United States all have fantastic water, and maybe I've just gotten really lucky, but it just made me think about access to clean water and how that really isn't a major issue for us. So after thinking about it for a while, we wanted to take this opportunity to use our small platform to make a little bit of a difference in the world. So there are 771 million people around the world who do not have access to safe water. And right here in this video, we're talking about making safe water as clean as we possibly can so it tastes as good as it can, right? But there are 771 million people that don't have access to safe drinking water at all. So starting today, we are doing a fundraiser for the next 90 days for a charity called water.org. This is a very transparent and effective charity, so I definitely feel safe uh, putting ourselves out there as someone who wants to support this charity. Our goal over the next 90 days is to fundraise $1,000 for this charity so that we can actually give to people who are not quite as fortunate as we are. And I hope it goes without saying that obviously we don't see a dime of this money. It all goes through the water.org website, but you know how the internet is, so I feel like we need to put this disclaimer out there. But I hope you all will join us and donate to this cause to help give people who don't have safe drinking water, safe drinking water. So during editing, I realized this video was gonna be like 25 minutes long, which is way longer than I ever intended it to be, but there's a lot of information in it. So I decided to split it up into two videos and I'm not gonna make you guys wait for video number two, I'm gonna release it tomorrow. So you're gonna see this video released today and then part two will be released tomorrow um, because it's just entirely too long for one video. So thank you guys for watching, I'll see you tomorrow.